Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, now, let me just go over some basic ground rules. I know there's a lot of uh, heated opinion about this uh, project, and, uh, and it really impacts your life. And I know that you might want to carry that over in this meeting. It's most productive if we can state the facts and state the points if you have a question later on. Uh, so that we can get through these questions and everybody has a chance to ask their questions. Because of just the number of people, um, it is limited to two, two minutes per question, one question per person, unless we have enough time. Let everybody in the room before you start, please. If you have a cell phone, please turn it off. And if you don't have a cell phone, please don't use your phone. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. And if you have a call, please uh, go outside to take that. Um, Sir, I'm sorry. Sir, Yes, we're in here. There's room against this wall over here. Yeah, there is room in here, and there's actually a few chairs left. Okay, what we're going to do is, uh, if, I know I didn't print out enough. I printed 30, and I thought that would be plenty. Um, we are going to go over some basics here. First, we're going to go through the introductions with the staff. We have a variety of different members of the community here, from ZO, from the county, uh, from the Grand Parkway. So we have a lot of different representation including the engineers with uh, ZO here. Um, it says on here, diagrams, renderings, and map review. Um, unfortunately, other than the map that I've provided here, uh, there will not be any renderings right now, but uh, ZO is working on uh, producing them and will put them on their website so that you can see what the actual intersections at Northgate and I guess the, the interchange, interchange will look like so you'll know more or less when you look in your backyard what you're going to see. Right? Is that correct? Okay. Uh, and then of course if there are other pieces of information you need to, to get you can contact me. And which by the way I'm David Moore so if you're on next door you've seen me. Um, I'm a Villages of Northgate Crossing uh, HOA member and we also have Jeff Conti here who's also a board member. Um, after we uh, go through the introductions, we're going to talk about some of the major timelines and what's going to be occurring, because I'm sure you all have questions as to the schedule of events. How long is this going to last? When is it going to affect me? Because people in Southgate, for example, or Eastgate have yet to have any major impact. I know if you're in the corner, you probably have, but really all the way down. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and answer pre-asked questions. So we're uh, there was an opportunity to ask questions and post them on the website prior to coming here. They have a copy of these, uh, these uh, questions, and I presume some answers and any data necessary to, to provide to, to back those up. Uh, after we answer those questions, then we'll open it up to the floor, and homeowners can ask a question. Again, we're going to have to limit it to two minutes and one question for homeowners, because I don't think we're going to get through that. But. So let's go ahead and get started, and uh, we'll start with Linda here, and she'll introduce all the staff, and then uh, each person can... Go from there. We just do just a little bit of housekeeping. Could everybody come this way so that everybody can get in? So you just come this way around as far as you can. Right, and then more people can get in along the wall. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. I apologize. <laughs> and for those who don't know, this is Gloria Lee. She's Villages of Northgate. Um, Homeowners Association Manager. Take it away, Linda. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Linda Merritt, and I'm with, in the Public Information Office with Zachary Odebrecht Parkway Builders. And to my left is Travis Ross, who is our Deputy Project Manager, uh, overseeing all construction activities for segments F1, F2, and G otherwise known as Between 290 and 59 North. And Kyle Wallace is our the Segment G Project Manager. And uh, here we have with us this evening David Gornett, who is Executive Director for the Grand Parkway Association, which is an organization that, work, that go, works with TxDOT on behalf of TxDOT. He helps conduct the studies prior to uh, the construction and holds the public hearings as part of the process. So David has been a part of this project for over 25 years? Yep. Uh, so he has the history and he works with the entire Grand Parkway project, not just uh, this particular project is a part of a much bigger picture. So 
Um, so David is here to help with any extended questions that you may have. Okay. Um, good evening. Again, my name is Travis Moross. Um, on behalf of Zachary Oderbeck, we just wanted to take this time in order to go over any questions and concerns and introduce ourselves to everybody in the community here. Um, as everybody is aware, we're building a 38-mile stretch from 290 to 59, like Linda said. Uh, we're in partnership with uh, TxDOT, and the, we have a contract with the state of Texas on this job. Um, with this undertaking, it's a very compressed schedule in order to give all the people this job in, you know, by late 2015. So, first and foremost, with this job and this compressed schedule, we just wanted to tell everybody that safety is at the forefront of all the planning and execution of the operations in which we're doing. So, come on in, sorry. So for us, with all the operations and all the planning we're doing, that's definitely one of the first things that we're taking into account in our planning for both the public and our operations. Um, in order to construct this job, we're having to go through some urban and residential areas as, you know, as the reason we're here in order to go over some questions and concerns. Some different things that we're doing in order to really help mitigate is we've definitely changed some of our plans in order to help everybody out here. We've uh, modified some of our equipment selection. We've gone through and helped with the backup alarms in order to help, and we've also gone through and modified our operations in order for performing the embankment. So um, I guess with the rest of the night, we'll go ahead and continue to look at some of the questions and concerns and go over anything. You know, for us, the one thing we really wanted to make sure is clear is that for us, we want to make sure that we help everybody in here to have this experience, you know, to go as well as it possibly can. We know it's a, there's some interruptions that are going to happen, but we're here to help, so... Um, at this time, we'll go ahead and turn it over to Linda, and uh, we'll kind of go from there with some questions and answers. But we appreciate your time, and if there's anything we can do, we're definitely here to help. Um, we do. We are appreciative of the opportunity of visiting with you this evening to hear your concerns. That everyone is here in one place, so we can share actual factual information and accurate information, uh, and hear your hear your input. Um, you know, we continue, as Travis mentioned, we continue to monitor our sound levels and try to make uh, in, uh, changes uh, to mitigate the noise levels as much as possible. Um, Hal and I will uh, take turns uh, answering some of your questions. And um, there are a lot of good questions. I think David did a, a very good job and probably taking a lot of different things and trying to make it as uh, concise as possible uh, so that we can help you. I'm sorry, Archie. Uh, this might be the only time somebody says this, but I can't hear you. Yeah. Oh, you speak up wow. Brain? You <laughs> have no idea how usual, unusual that is. Thank you. Uh, thank you for letting it's me know. It's the rain, I think. It's kind of, we can hear it over here. No, I appreciate you letting me know. Well. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, so uh, so why, why don't we begin? We do appreciate it. Thank you for your time this evening, and we want to make the most of this time to be able to address concerns and begin a conversation. And if we, you know, we'll continue conversations as we move along and keep you informed. Um, I think one of the first one of the first areas of interest was addressing the noise levels and, and how how we monitor it, um, why we're why we're doing the night work. And uh, Kyle, I'm gonna let you lead off. Okay. As Linda said, my name is Kyle Wallace. I'm the segment manager uh, for segment G. Segment G goes from forty five all the way over to fifty nine, so I'm dealing with that fourteen miles of road or so. Uh, like Travis said, one of the, the main reasons that we're having to work at night on this project is that because uh, our contract is, has a very aggressive time schedule. We're required to, to, to uh, turn over the entire 38 miles of the Grand Parkway that we're building by the end of uh, December of 2015. And 38 miles seems like that it's a lot of roadway to build but the way that we're getting the right-of-way coming into our possession and the way that the work areas come to us, they come in very small pieces. And so when we get an area that's available to us, it's important that we go in, work in that area, and complete it as quickly as possible so that we can move on to the next area. Uh, as, as we're going through the project, we're going to be working at very lo various locations throughout the project. We will be working at nights. 
the good thing is that we won't be working at night in one area throughout the duration of the project, but it's going to be intermittent. We're going to hit an area for a while, and then as we move through the different cycles of the construction work, it'll require us to phase in and out for different areas. Um, for this area that we're meeting about tonight in particular, the two main reasons that we are working at night have to do with utility adjustments and then what we see as safety related to the volume of traffic that we're bringing into the new Grand Parkway. Uh, related to utility adjustments, the, uh, a different part of the project involves raising the transmission lines over 45 and over the Hardy Toll Road in order to provide room for the new direct connectors and things that we're building. That contractor, because of the regulations that they're working under, has to do their work during daylight hours. And as they're working on these power lines, there's times where they're lowering the lines to the ground before they raise them up, up onto the new poles. So it's not safe for us to be working underneath them in the same areas. So because they're working at day, in order for us to keep our schedule moving, we moved over to nighttime operations. Um, the other reason that we're running at night has to do uh, with safety. Uh, we know that during the daytime that there's a lot of traffic on Northgate Crossing. There's a lot of people out jogging and spending their time uh, in the neighborhood. We're running about 20 to 25 trucks every night, moving about 4,000 cubic yards of dirt, and that winds up being almost 500 truckloads that are coming through the area every night. So we think that it running at night actually helps decrease traffic congestion in the area and makes things a little bit safer. So those are the, those are the two main reasons why we're working at night. Um, I know there's been questions about why we haven't been working during daytime hours on the weekends. And the reason that is right now is that our work shift, we're planning to work from Sunday night to Friday night, six days a week right now. And when we're on the night shifts, it's not safe for us to change our guys over and have them working uh, daytime operations right after coming off the night shift. You know, we can only one, work one shift at a time, and then our guys need to have some time off to rest. So that's why uh, you don't see us uh, working during the days on the weekends. Uh, and I think those are mine. Uh, as far as more scheduled activity about, uh, let's see, I think the next question had to do with uh, where we're working. Uh, the, the schedule for the parcels. We are working, obviously, to the uh, west of Northgate Crossing right now. As the, the parcel to the east comes available, we will start working over in that area. I think that we'd expect that to start happening uh, hopefully by late December or early January of next year. You'll start seeing us come in clearing trees and hopefully moving uh, towards the east, towards Nelson Street. Uh, I think there's there have been a question. One of the <coughs> questions was specifically about Nelson Street. Nelson Street is not in the best of condition, and we recognize that. Probably we'll use, a, a, it'll be a, um, a limited access point. Uh, the preference will be uh, from Northgate Crossing across the, the parcel to limit any further uh, damage to the, to the road. Um, I can't say we'll never use it because there may be in, uh, occasions where we'll need to access from that end. But right now, the plan is it will not be a regularly used path. Um, we've got, um, the, I'm sorry? No, so I think it was the milestones. Is that what's next? The milestones of the project. Um, I mean, mentioned this starting the project after, or starting on the next parcel, um, early, uh, late December. Yeah, I think what we plan on doing with the milestones is we'll get a, a milestone timeline on the website for everybody to view with high-level milestones. That way everybody can see it and, and have a good view of it. But for this short term, in order to get ready for this meeting, we're not able to get a, a good visual for everybody on that right now. So. There, um, we will, and I'll just jump to it. That was one of the later questions. But we, are, we do have an active website. 
um, that is just was designed with the idea in mind of it being a central point of information, uh, central point of information that you can access at your convenience 24/7. Um, it's, if you don't know the address, it is grandparkway99.com. Hopefully, uh, you'll get a chance to pick up some of the literature that we've brought this evening. If you haven't yet, please do. And the website is on there as well. There's also an email address for the public information as well as a hotline. So where you can uh, call, get information, provide comments. Um, it's... Um, where our goal is to set, uh, create a special section for the various uh, neighborhoods. Uh, there'll be one for North Gate Crossing, and we'll be able to provide information about the sound walls, about the designs, the name the interchanges, so you can see what, what to expect and what the construction will look like. At this time, there's already um, a, uh, a map on their uh, on the design section that shows the entire length between 290 and 59 North that shows the access point. So it will show where uh, the roads intersect. Within a section that's called Getting Around, there is a Google Map feature. You can, we've broken it out to try to make it easy to find information, providing construction updates, as well as providing a snapshot of the neighborhood, showing how the, the path of the project or the right of way uh, intersects the various streets in the neighborhoods. So you can go to the very first section, getting around, you can find, this is called Segment G. Uh, you can click on that, it'll also label it in there, uh, I-45 to 59, uh, if you have a question or forget that it's which segment you're in. Click on there, and then at the top, if you look on the, the left-hand side, <laughs> there'll be a little plus and minus where you can zoom in, and you can see where the how the uh, different uh, properties lay out in the exact streets. So that will help show exactly where it is in relation. Uh, sound walls has been one of the questions. The sound walls are generally aligned with the right of way. And uh, in, uh, in this instance, it will be with the south side. It will be adjacent to uh, two to three feet from approximately from the property line. And on the north side, with the it will line align with the center point easement or right of way. That's correct. So, and I know one of the one of the questions that we were given about the sound walls has to do with uh, could the sound walls be built first? Uh, and one of the interesting things about this project is that this is a design-build project, and the concept behind the design-build is to allow us to deliver to the uh, to our owner uh, a lot of work and a lot of completed product in a very short time. So when we go through the design process, we're designing the storm drain systems, the fill on the road, and the pavement section, and we typically have to build all of that first before we install the sound walls. And so because the sound walls are designed to mitigate noise on the final roadway project to, to quiet the, the noise coming off the tires, it's something that's typically designed last uh, in our design process. But we are in the final stages of design and we should have the sound walls um, designs completed probably by the end of this year. And then starting next year, it's going to give us the opportunity to start working and installing some sound walls. So the reason that they're not in first has to do a lot with uh, typical con construction practices and then the nature of, of how this job is as a design-build project. Will they be built in the space, like road sound walls, not like five years from now? No, no, the sound walls have to be built before the end of our project as well as part of our scope. So that, that is correct. Um, as far as the, the questions about the sound levels uh, that were asked, uh, we take the sound levels that, we're, that you're experiencing tonight very seriously. Um, we've made a lot of efforts to monitor the sound that we're generating, and we've tried to find ways to mitigate uh, the noise that, that we are making. Obviously, uh, our equipment and the things that we're going to be doing are going to be louder than the, the forested area that was there before we started. But uh, 
some of the things that we've done in order to reduce our noise footprint uh, to 85 decibels or less is that we've changed out the backup alarms on all of our equipment. Those alarms used to go off at about 114 decibels and we've installed special whisper type alarms which emit down at 85 decibels. So that helps to reduce the noise. Uh, another change that we have made is that when we started working out there, we were working with a large track dozer that had metal tracks on it. Uh, over the last week, we've changed out that piece of equipment to a, a rubber track dozer. So that machine, because it's got four rubber tracks instead of two steel tracks, it makes a lot less noise. And so that's helped to bring our sound levels down. Uh, We've also tried to modify our work practices to mitigate the noise that you hear. So what you'll see us doing is that when we're making the fill, we're going to start closer to your fence lines and try to work in the outsides of the right-of-way and try to work in that area from about 7 to 10 o'clock at night. And then as it gets later in the night when people are starting to go to sleep, we're trying to move towards the center line of the roadway and that gives us more distance for the sound to dissipate before it gets to, uh, to your houses. Uh, the other main thing that we're working on right now is that we're working to train our truck drivers to, uh, to dump their loads in a, in a quieter way. You know, if we we're trying to teach them to, uh, to not just stop as soon as they, they raise their bed and dump their load, but to keep moving forward so that the gate doesn't swing down and hit a, uh, a fixed object in the truck. If we can let them keep moving slowly, it gives a chance for the gate to slow down and swing a little bit. And as the bed of the truck closes, it's able to close a little more softly and not be as disruptive. So uh, since we started out there, we've, we've monitored the, the noise that, uh, that we're generating and the sound levels at lots of locations up and down the, the right of way. And uh, we've, made a, we've made a very good effort at, and we've been successful in bringing the noise level down to, uh, to the 85 decibel range. So uh, I think that, that, uh, that we've had a lot of success there. I don't think that, that uh, the decibels are going to get a lot lower than probably the mid-70s to, the, to that 85 degree range. But, uh, but we have made a lot of progress since we started. Can I have you hold the question? Because I'm sure there are tons of people in here with other questions that they're waiting to ask. Okay, and so, we're yeah, and we'll we'll Sorry. then allow you to ask any follow-on question, and they may in fact answer your question during this uh, topic. Mm -hmm. One of the things I wanted to say is that we're construction in general, uh, but especially night construction is regulated by many guidelines. Uh, which we are committed to um, to adhere to those statutes the, in those codes. Um, we're still we continue to evaluate how we can <laughs> mitigate the noise. Um, we've made some progress, as Kyle said, and it's and there's still noise, and there will be noise because we're using big equipment. <laughs> and I know that's not that's not a comfort, but we are committed to try to lessen the impact to the degree we can and still safely operate the equipment and achieve the, our commitment and our obligation to the contract in constructing this project. Um, one of our commitments and good faith efforts is the investment in the, the monitoring equipment. It was, there's been a question about, well, how do you know that it's reading properly? It was regulated by the manufacturer, and we chose to do that to try to ensure that it's the most accurate reading as possible. Um, in terms of, and I'll just raise it because I know the question will come up about a third party uh, monitoring. You certainly have that right. Um, and if, if that information wants to be provided to us, you know, we will take that, we will share it with, um, with our, the appropriate resources. Uh, we do have some additional representatives here this evening who can help answer questions if there are further questions about it. Um, but we are committed, we are doing everything we can to try to lessen uh, the, the sound impact. Um, we've got, um, we're trying to com 
combine and, and answer as best we can. So there are a lot of questions. So <laughs> we want to make sure that we're answering your questions, but also leaving plenty of time for you to ask questions. Forgive me if I'm cheating and referring back to notes because I don't want to leave anything out. Um, there was a question about light pollution. Um, that's a hard question to answer. Uh, in terms of lights, how lights will be done, if we use Beltway 8 as an example, that is what's called a con continuous, um, continuous uh, lighting. I was thinking there's another term. Um, that is not part of the scope of this project. Instead, there will be lighting where appropriate and where it will impact safety, an on-ramp, an exit ramp, and at the toll gantries. There will not, this project has always been planned to be a toll project. There will be, it will be electronic toll um, with the tag, not the traditional booths or, that you see in parts of uh, Beltway 8. Instead, it will be electronic. So it will have that, uh, an easy tag, uh, text tag, uh, the various ones that are, there's a reciprocating agreement around the state. So you're not restricted to a particular a particular tag, but where this where it, it uh, affects safety and in mobility on the parkway, that's that's where what will determine the lighting. Um, we are. What am I? What am I missing? You're on the uh, traffic line right now. Yeah, about there, you hit most of the skip so down there. Okay. I think we have, we've addressed Nelson Street, and I think we have addressed most of it. We've talked about the website. Oh, um, and the, uh, I don't, don't, uh, this question. Um, I think, I think we've covered most everything. Is there a question? I'm sorry. What about that question that you didn't want to do? It was, it was a question about, um, well, let me answer what I can okay. answer. It Thanks. was about, there was a question about the, someone had observed a water hose hooked up to the meter. And in fact, we do have a meter that has been provided by MUD District 2. So it is being monitored, it is being calculated, and the, the usage that is being, uh, is being captured uh, of what we've used from this project. So that is not being passed on. I don't have an answer uh, for a particular question that uh, was asking about the homeowners uh, having to pay 50% of the cost on the utilities. Um, it says, why does MUD 2 and by proxy, your homeowners have to pay 50% of the cost to move utilities such as the water supply, storm, and sewer. Wouldn't this be responsibility of the state? What happens if those changes result in damage or failure? Um, I don't have an answer to that, but that's something we can continue to to try to get an answer to. Anything with that? The, I'm just reading the question. I, I don't know. The questions were submitted anonymously, so you know, being fair, that's good. Uh, but Mr. what? Mr. Burnett, have an answer to that question. Please. <coughs> what was that? Would you have an answer to that question since you've been tied to this project? I, I've been in this project for a long time, but it, on the construction side, typically the local municipality, either a city or in this case the municipal utility district, does have some responsibilities. But not being on the construction side, I'm not aware of all the details of where that line of responsibility is. Uh, if they're in the county road right of way, we're spanning the county road right of way, there should not be any impacts to those two water lines or sewer lines within that county road right of way. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Who's going to follow up on that and get back with us? Who's going to take lead? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I, can, I, I can speak some more information on it. Um, I'm, I'm Jeff Conte. I'm actually one of the MUD board members. Um, I believe the estimated cost to relocate sewage um, and uh, the, the water supply lines is about $120,000. Uh, and it, it, there's state legislation that impacts the, the, the utility district at being responsible for 50% of, of the relocation cost. That is why we're responsible for it. I, I guess the question 
uh, being submitted, and I, I'll say I didn't submit the question, may have been whether or not that's absolutely required. I'm sure it could be, uh, you know, waived uh, if, if, you know, you guys so choo choose to do that. I don't know. So this is a law? It, it's it, it's the legislation sort of places a responsibility on the utility district to pay to bear 50%, like you were saying, or the municipality. Would you know that? Uh, safe, as, as we've mentioned, safety is a priority, and we do understand the concerns and the frustration, and it's a priority to com complete our work um, as safely and quickly as possible, um, and we it is a phase schedule because there it's like baking a cake. There are ingredients, there are certain elements <laughs> that you've got to put in to make it work uh, for the ultimate finished product. That's not the best analogy, but it's there. There is an appropriate schedule of scope of work and different uh, elements of the work that has have to take place in a certain order. Um, anything else? Well, I think. <coughs> excuse me. I think the other question was related to the <coughs> the traffic and some of the dirt that has been on uh, Northgate Crossing from our work. Uh, we did get caught on a couple nights and a couple of pretty uh, pop-up showers that caused us to track some mud on the road. Uh, we have been working to, to mitigate that. Hopefully what you see today is a lot better than what it was before. We've made adjustments to our construction entrances, which are rock entrances that are designed to try to knock mud off the tires of the trucks as they come off of our work area. We've lengthened that area out and we've delineated it more clearly with barrels so that the trucks know where to go and so they work through those areas. We've also brought, uh, I believe we have two uh, sweeper brooms over there that are working the area and we're, we're working very hard to pay attention to the weather that's coming through so that we try not to get caught by uh, a rainstorm uh, when there's any dust on the road that then turns the road to uh, to more of a muddy mess. When so these we're changes? these changes have happened this week. And the driver is driving different as well as the mud. When did you make those changes? This has all happened since starting last Wednesday. Okay. These changes have gone into effect. The sound, the uh, backup alarms were installed over the weekend. So the backup alarms changed between when we came back on shift Sunday night. The driver training on the dumping of the trucks has been very active since Sunday and Monday night where we've been making a concerted effort to try to make them dump better. And the, the uh, rubber high-speed dozer, I want to say, went into effect either Thursday night or Friday night. So uh, it has been staged as we've been able to get resources in play, but uh, I believe it has made a difference. Yeah, it actually has, so that's why I asked. Thank you. I, Thank I appreciate you, you signing that. Thank you. We're trying. And I think we'll continue to enact um, other measures as we see. You know, anything that we can develop, we're definitely going to look to enact additional measures in order to help out with that. So, so there is a question that was asked about, I think, rubber gaskets on the trucks. We have, I know that that's in the FHWA manual. We have tried using that to some extent, uh, not with rubber mats, but with some carpeting material that we've used to absorb sound before. Uh, it, it hasn't made a lot of difference in the noise levels that we've seen. And uh, one of the concerns that we have with utilizing the rubber gaskets is that these trucks don't make watertight seals. And if we use the gaskets on there, it's going to affect the gap that is in the back of the, the tailgate on the truck which increases the chances of us dropping dirt on the road as we're driving in there and causing another problem. So we, we don't think that the, the gasketing solution is probably going to be as effective as maybe what you're led to believe by what's on the, the brochures on the internet. And we really think that the driver training and trying to get the truck drivers to pay attention to how they do their operation is going to be the the best way to control that truck noise. Could you implement a fine on the driver for uh, it? <laughs> uh, Again, so I'd like to ask that we hold questions because I know a lot of people have questions and I know they're in the moment and you're welcome to ask them. We're, we're getting very close to being done with the pre-prepared questions and then that'll give everybody an equal chance because it looks like we're going to have plenty of time now. Sorry about that. Um, one of the other, uh, one of the other 
changes we've implemented, implemented is that initially the uh, silt sock uh, that was used at the drain was changed out because the initial one was a little bit thicker and it, it uh, hampered the velocity of drainage. So what we did when we noticed that and found out about it, our environmental uh, person who has been monitoring quite closely um, the tracking of dirt as well as the drainage issues, she changed out the silt sock for a different kind and it now should allow for greater drainage. With some of the training rains we've had, it makes it challenging regardless of what method you have. But we're required uh, to do drainage mitigation, soil erosion mitigation, and we take that seriously as well. So we're, do, we're taking every measure we can to ensure that water quality is, may, is maintained as well as uh, any erosion issues and protecting, uh, protecting the appropriate resources in place. Um, one of the things, too, that was brought to my attention just this week about <laughs> lights. Uh, there have been a couple of instances, I understand, where the lights were not directed properly and uh, I think some of the crews noticed it and tried to make a change immediately. That's something that, are, that is definitely important and that should not be happening. You should not be experiencing the bright light shining into the homes and that's, that's something that we have spoken with our crews to ask them to please Please be aware, step back and take a look at the big picture and make sure that we're not doing that, that we're directing the lights appropriately. Um, another consideration we could, we're looking at is if there are some different types of lights we could use. Um, so, um, so that, thank you for, for getting that, bringing that to our attention. Uh, but that's one of the things that uh, it's good to hear about because we can't fix it if we don't know it's happening to you. Uh, one other, one last thing, and I think we've covered most everything, and there was a question about claims. What happens if there's damage to my property? What happens if it's, whether it's grass or fence or whatever? We'll take consideration of claims on a case-by-case -case basis. Well, certainly uh, what we do ask is to help us and provide detailed information. Help us pro uh, get, provide the date, the time kind of a summary of circumstance of what happened. Take pictures, um, you know, help us with a cost estimate and any additional information you can provide. Uh, there's been an instance where there, there, uh, there is a claim of damage um, and we have confirmed it was not our crews. Um, there was some utility work and there's as many as three different contractors working on behalf of a utility doing some work and um, there, there's a, a claim of some damage to fence. There was also an unfortunate placement of some portalettes. <laughs> it was not a good decision, but uh, it, even though we had nothing to do with that, we agreed that was a very poor choice and chose to take responsibility for having that relocated. But that was actually within the center point right of way, and we were not working in that area. But we wanted to do the right thing. We didn't want there to be an issue and just say, hmm, not our problem and try to flip it on to, you know, another resource. So um, we, we do need to know, but we need your help just in terms of documentation and what happened. Any, any information you can provide uh, would be helpful and we will, we will give consideration to those on a case-by-case -case basis and work directly with the, the party involved. So. David? You covered them all, Linda. <laughs> all right, so that answers. Is there uh, there, any there's there's oh. two questions oh, well, left on here that I didn't mark off. Uh, we did not discuss the Northgate Crossing Boulevard. Uh, the bridge design is a single span bridge with there'll be walls on each end of the uh, on each side of the of Northgate Crossing Boulevard and a single span going over the road. Typically, you often see text out roads where they have a U-turn. It'll be three spans, one span on the side, one in the middle, one off to the other side. This will be a single span. <clears throat> and then there, uh, as far as sidewalks, including sidewalks along Northgate Crossing, uh, that is not within the scope of this project. May I ask my question on sidewalks now? Uh, wait, we're almost getting close. We're getting real close. Um, were there any questions that were in this that if you had a copy of this that didn't you didn't feel were answered and the pre-prepared questions yes sir 
Yeah, you know, you stated that the reason you can't work on the weekends is because you have to have allow your individuals time off in between shifts, which I understand is safety regulation. But different monitoring of the schedule. For example, she stated that for safety reasons, when you operate at night, you have to adhere to certain compliances which do slow the work down, basically. Given those two factors, looking at what you're talking about, what would be wrong with a Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night worksheet, a buffer <coughs> on Friday and Friday night, Saturday during the day, Sunday during the day, buffer on Sunday night, buffer on Monday, and then commence back with your night shifts on Monday night and only go from Monday to Thursday night. That, that could be, that's a, a possible scenario um, that we could take into consideration. That's not something that, uh, that we would typically do, but it's something that could be a way to help mitigate the problem. It's just the shifting of work from nighttime to, to daytime operations. It's, uh, it's, it has to do a lot with you know, how the human body responds, responds to getting into a sleep cycle. <clears throat> And so once you can get guys on a nighttime, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. And I think hold on. Both your safety issue, you would have less traffic to contend with on the weekends, so you'd have less of a problem for that. I think it would speed up your work shift. That's a very good idea. That's something that we can definitely take into consideration. I have a. a Don't have to prove to shift to different crews. Go to work to handle the work like yeah, rotate like this. At times, there at times in the area there may be days and nights. To add to the question here, you, you were saying one of the reasons why you're having to do it at night was the relocation of utility lines. Is that projected to take as long as you will be working in that area? Is there a possibility in the future that the utility line movement is complete and then your, your schedule can shift during uh, daylight hours? There is a possibility that that will happen. So we just have to, uh, we don't control that utility relocation. And so as things, uh, as they finish up their work, then we'll be able to evaluate what we can do going forward. Okay. Uh, the gentleman in the blue. Are they working on concerns? Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, the gentleman in the blue? Yes. Yeah, and I appreciate what you said about the safety, but what you're doing is now, with all the trucks running all night, and, and residents can't sleep at night, you've shifted that risk that people have to get up to work and drive, so now they're fatigued, possibly driving kids. So now you've just shifted that risk to the residents. Is that, a, is that a question? Well, that's a statement. That's a okay. Statement. If yeah. we can... Uh, if you have statements, as mentioned in here, if you have statements, comments, or suggestions, I would direct them to Linda. Um, what we're hoping to get is questions that we can answer with these resources, and then she can pass any comments or questions, uh, comments on to her staff. Yeah, so, 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 Ken, so, a so his suggestion is, 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 is a fair one, at least shifting it, that way you can balance it off. Or, I think if you look at the amount of traffic during the daytime, I don't think it's as much as you think. There's not a lot of traffic on Northgate Crossing during the daytime. No, there's really not. Uh, so it's really safe for everyone during the daytime. Okay, uh, the woman in the blue? Yeah, as far as the utilities, I'm saying I can't work during the day because they're working on utilities. There is absolutely no movement at all. My husband works in the commercial building up front by 45. I live at the first red beacon, as my children call it now. So there is no movement, and I have video of the, the people working on the High Lines at like probably 12.30 at night the other night with the lights pointed up at them on those cranes that are like 12 stories high. They were working with about 50 dump trucks. So there's nobody out there during the day, and they're climbing High Lines with lights pointed up at them at 12.30 at night. So they're working together at the same time, but you just said they can't do them. Y'all just said that that was a regulation that cannot work at the same time, and they were up there. I've got video of it. Is there a reason why we didn't invite the utility center point or somebody represented that there? Because I noticed y'all are kind of pushing the buck on them. Uh, can y'all answer those two questions? Uh, the direction that we were given was that they wanted us to be clear of their right of way between uh, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Including weekdays? Weekend days? 
Yes. We don't we don't know what their what their work schedule is. They've told us to the state clear. For how long? Yeah, there's there's a, so their timeline for completing the relocation is uh, January 14th. Linda, yes. can you answer the question about um, Center Point not being here, or are, are you the head? Are you the central conduit through which those issues might be addressed? Um, I can cer I'm certainly glad to try to help get answers to it. I don't have an exact answer in terms of we're coordinating with uh, well over 200 different utilities. Um, Center Point is, is one of them. They're obviously a significant uh, one of the utilities, but there are as many as three different contractors working on, in the area on behalf of Center Point at this time. So there's a there is a, a a very uh, involved coordination and schedule with utilities um, and in terms of I, I am of the understanding that we don't always know exactly what their schedule is so there are some days when they have not shown up and on those days I believe we have had um, workers cruise out to get out during the day when we've seen that there is that opportunity of getting out there and working during the day. So we've tried to take advantage where we could and where we were able, had the resources to be able to accomplish some work. But the wise center points here, I, you know. Um, so there's just too many contractors to have them right. all here. And we're not trying to be critical to center point because their center point is very good, is equally committed to safety. They have their guidelines and their schedules and their and their agreements that we have to strike with them. So it's it's a matter of respecting, um, you know, the requests made to us. But you know, I, if if you want to get with me afterwards, ask you know, help me write down what question we need to pose. I'd be more than happy to see what information we could get. Just a comment to your. Uh or question about the comment you made, saying you can you, know, you coordinated with the center point, and if they are not working, you are bringing your crew to do the work. How can you bring your crew to do the work during the day when it is a safety violation? To work at night and during the day. I mean, they're working at night. Now, how are you bringing them up? There's no plans to do it. They're just planning night. She just got window. through saying. There will, yeah. there will I, I've seen like one person walking around out there during yes. the day, maybe one person on a piece of machinery, but it doesn't mean that y'all are bringing a crew in to do the dump trucks and the work. And that's what we're all concerned with. We don't care about one person on a heavy on heavy equipment. That means nothing to us. The sound is the dump trucks. That's our concern. That's why we're here. Can I pause this all real, real quick kind of shift things? We're, we're kind of being being wise and how foolish here. Now, uh, the sleep thing, uh, let me at, let you ask your first question. Long term, uh, we're, the noise is here. They're going to build it. We can't stop it. As much as we'd love to, if you're a little force back. But to make it whole and make everybody right, you know, and, and, and kind of I guess effectively compensate the group for this and, and stay with me. Can we make sure that the sound walls are well above the level of the road? You've seen other, hold on, you've seen other neighborhoods like this, Dallas North Tollway, Highland Park, their value went up when the tollway went through because they made it nice. Make it nice, we'll all be compensated. Second thing about the sound walls, on the flyovers there, I've noticed that you can almost see in our backyards as the highway is on 45. So if somebody's elevated about 40 feet, and I believe you was only 40 feet on the phone one time, right there, they're going to be able to see straight down in our backyards. And so can we make sure that there's a privacy wall on the flyover so that some creeper can't go driving by and be like, oh, look, those kids are playing in the backyard and go, and, and just have that little open trap right there for them. So can y'all make sure when you leave, and kind of the, really the sound wall is effectively uh, the walk path through there, you know, we've got dump trucks, got folks running on the road and things like that. You know, a sidewalk right down Northgate Boulevard would be pretty cheap. Okay, okay, okay. So I can answer. Uh, okay, hold on. I can answer part of your question. Um, there were. There were, I was involved with sound piece, and I went personally to every home that borders, not including uh, the park. Um, every house in Northgate, and I had people uh, vote on their particular one. It was, a, it was issued by the state, and you had to vote on the color and the kind of wall that you wanted. The wall is, I believe, 18? 16? 16, 16 feet. And as they mentioned before, the actual diagram showing the placement of the sound walls, where they're be will come out later because this is 
design build. Can I actually right. show the remote? It's already done. This was we done by the state before. Built in, built in, built in, built in, built I would suggest, excuse me, I would suggest that you uh, bring that up with Linda and yeah. you can recommend that to her. Okay. That's not as much a question and we need to get a lot of questions here. Uh, sir, the, <laughs> will, there, will, there be, will there be bonuses paid to these companies for early completion of the project? I'm sorry, the there is. Is. Will there be early? Will there be bonuses paid to the companies doing the work for early completion? State contract, yes. We don't have an early completion bonus. I know the state penalized that they don't get the job done. Do you have liquidation? Excuse me, hold on. Is this a question that you can answer, yeah. being from Grand Park? Uh, no, that, that would be their contract, and they would know their contract whether they have bonus penalties or liquidated <laughs> damages if they're not done on time. We do not have an early completion bonus on this project. Now. We have liquidated damages. Yes, we have liquidated damages. Do you care to explain what liquidated da damages is? <laughs> in, in layman's, excuse me, hold on, hold on. Liquidated, can you explain liquidated damages for those who are not aware? Liquidated damages are uh, um, monies that are associated with different items of work in which the completion maybe is completed at a different time frame other than what's in the contract. So you're getting a penalty if you do not finish on time. That is correct. Okay. Right. And the contract with the state of Texas is to deliver the completed project by late 2015. Uh, the man in the striped shirt. No bonus payment. Excuse me, hold on. The man in the striped shirt. The lifespan of our roads is limited, and due to the excessive weight and the amount of mileage that's going to be put on the roads after five years from now, when we start getting potholes and cracks, who we contact? Uh, the roads are owned by the county. And the county maintains them. Why do we pay a rud then? The rud does not own the the, the roads. The rud owns only our debt. Road and the lifespan is X, and we're shortening it down to half of that. That would become the responsibility of the county at that point Wouldn't to maintain the Fifty percent we pay to move the things would be offset by the five hundred trucks that are going through a night on our roads. I think mud utility is totally separate of the roads. Oh, mud, the the sewer, wastewater, all that. That's totally separate of the roads. So They're not connected at all. Rudd for? Rudd is a debt payment. When the developer need. built this subdivision, they had a choice of to pay for the, the roads up front and then roll that into the cost of the land when they sold it, or they could issue debt that would then be attached to the property. They chose that option. They then turned over the roads because they would be responsible for maintaining them if they did not turn them over to the county. They didn't want to be responsible, the RUD, because then they would have to keep issuing debt to then fix the roads. So just issue them our debt. <laughs> it's not how it works. They're hauling all kinds of stuff through our roads. It's not how it works. Everybody's listening to it all night. I, I'm hearing you. But if you'd like to talk about that, we have some, we have some people in the association. They're in the RUD. I don't know. Maybe they're free here. Um, and you can direct those questions to me. You already asked. I Sorry. Answer. No, no. Uh, yes, 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 the woman in the purple? Uh, this is for the contractors. With respect to your driver training, can you re emphasize to them we have a speed limit through our subdivision uh, as well as stop signs? Because I'm, I'm coming through the subdivision many times and they're blowing through the stop signs, they're, they're exceeding the 30 miles an hour. And, and it, it, at night, it really gets noisy. My, my backyard. It's right up against the, the thoroughfare, and these guys are driving fast. That's, that is a very appropriate request. We will and definitely thank, and thank you for that, that. because uh, we, there is an expectation of our employees to uh, <coughs> adhere to or observe safety guidelines, including speed limits. The drivers with the trucks are not our <coughs> employees. They're employees uh, employed by the independent contractor, but they still represent work being done on our project. So thank you for bringing it to our attention, and we definitely will address that. The woman in the back row? Um, I know that a lot of our streets have flooded already in rainstorms. So what's being done with the retention to displace the water to guarantee that it's not going to flood worse with the new road coming in. Can you tell us where you live, where this is applicable? 
I'm in Westgate, and about a year, a year and a half ago, June of last year, um, we had water halfway up our front yard for one day because it rained one time for like six hours straight. So you're wondering if the toll road will do something to mitigate the water that was there prior? No, I'm wondering about if there's a retention pond or uh -huh. something. Oh, so you're curious about the drainage plan that they yeah. have to manage water runoff. An ad additional retention pond or something because we're not going to have the additional soft ground to soak okay. up a lot of water. All right. Did you get that? I'm, I'm on Taylor Ridge, and my backyard today is under, not underwater. We have a pool, and then we have, like, grass behind it. Mm -hmm. It is about two inches deep in water, and we've never had standing water in our backyard, okay. ever. So maybe y'all can address so the overall drainage program that's part of this? Rains really bad tomorrow. Um, we, we can definitely take a look at it, is what we can say. As far as our attention, um, overall at the beginning of the project, there's studies done and there's designs that are formulated in order to uh, um, allow for all the retention needed. So that's what's been done right now. So should we just keep reporting I, it? I, I don't know how factual well, this is. Oh, go ahead. What, yeah, I just, what, did, you, did, you catch the, did you catch the address? Uh, off Westgate, not the official. Can, can, we, can, we, can we get your address? It's 22911. 22911 Westgate? I'm on the corner of Westgate and Spencer's Gate. Okay. And I'm on Merrimack oh, Ridge. I have water in my backyard also. Okay, um, now, I know in the schematic diagrams that we looked at several years ago, there was an eight acre water retention pond on Nelson. Is that still part of the project? I believe it's still west of Nelson, if I remember correctly. West or east? Um, in some farmland. So, but there's clearly a water management program so that any water that's developed on the toll road will be managed that's to some place so it won't be just dumped into any of the neighborhoods or into the stormwater sewer systems of the association or the neighborhood. It controls, it is, the water that is collected within the right of way is designed and is distributed to drainage channels. Okay. So it should not, the plan and the analysis we do should not have any adverse impact on the neighborhood. Um, yes, sir? Okay, I'm going to go back to my original question about the utility. What I'm hearing is good, but my backyard is, my address is 1007 Spencer's Gate Court. And my fence backs up to what you're working at right now. My house is with a great, great big utility pole right in the middle of it. And my, my whole backyard is underwater. And I've asked, I've went out there personally and asked your operators, your foreman, if they could take their bulldozers and move some of the dirt. To, because what's happened is, is they're building up and the water is just running down. And but, but when I talked to them, they said, well, we don't, we don't have anything to do with that. That's the utility people. That's utility contractors. We don't have anything to do with that part. So they won't, they won't move any of the dirt or any of the water or anything about probably 60 to 70 feet from our fence out to where the project is. So is this a temporary thing or is this so a long-term thing? Area area Does this mean that temporary during the construction process the water sheds off of the... And then it goes over to your project. And that eventually it will be then captured? We'll take a look at the drainage. We, we, need, to, we need to evaluate what's going on in the temporary easement. Okay, so one of the issues is for Spencer's Gate that yeah. the water, I guess, is shedding off of the, because the of pile the, of dirt in the all's backyard. Yes, because of the, 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 the road is the dirt and make it the way too high. Uh -huh. So our fence is, I mean, our backyard is looks like lower. Uh -huh. So when the rain's coming like today, it's our backyard is like a... A retention pond. <laughs> yeah. So it just shed, the water sheds off of the dirt into the I can swim in the backyard. Okay. The problem is not the bad guys the other night when they were um, Yes, sir. The man in Rob, the... you want to mention something here? This yeah. is Rob Fishman. Or, I'm sorry, Maxwell. Rob Maxwell. Go ahead. Spencer's Gate is on the north side. Yes, correct. correct. No, so it's the, the south side. Southern Bus Road. It's in the... It's on the north side of the right of way. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Actually, it's north, it's north of the center point easement. So they're piling up dirt on the other side of the easement. No, no, I think you're thinking of Westgate, which is the north side, on the side with the 
Spencer's Gate is on the north side. Spencer's Gate is on the north side. Oh, right there. I want to see the north side. I keep thinking it was the other one. Uh, yes, sir, the white shirt. I know you've been talking about safety for your truck drivers, and she was talking about we can claim, like, write some claims or, you know, like, take pictures and everything. Like, right now I live on Taylor Ridge. My factory is full of water, too. That's one thing. <clears throat> Second thing, it's, uh, I work. Uh, they've been noticed that I've been, like, late every day now. I can get to sleep. It's not safety for me to drive. So my question is, if I get in a wreck, because <laughs> I have, I mean, I'm not playing. I mean, it's really hard for me to drive. <clears throat> and uh, so that's something that I can bring on you know, my claim and give it to her. So, Linda, is, is, if he has an issue of a claim of any kind, whether that's property or other, he should address it to you? Seriously, like right now, my body is shaking. I mean, it's been good for the past few <laughs> I honestly don't know. Um, but that's a, that's a fair question. Um, but tonight, right now, I don't have an answer for you. I don't know. Um, is, is this uh, something that's a greater thing rolled up into the bigger umbrella of Grand Parkway? Or is it not a specific contractor's responsibility? It would be, it would not be a Grand Parkway responsibility, nor would it be, you know, you'll, you'll have to find out the information. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to find out. I, mm -hmm. I do not so know. So if, if a contractor had a piece of equipment ran into your fence, that contractor would be responsible. That's very different. So <laughs> That's a different kind of when it's thing. more obscure, it's not a particular contractor, like noise or whatever. It's hard to... I don't have an answer for the more obscure uh, claim. Is there I somewhere he can be directed to? I'll, I'll be glad if, if, if we can talk afterwards and I can get your contact information if you're willing to do that. I'll, okay. I'll research it and see uh, that I, I, I have no idea. Uh, the man in the light blue shirt hat. Question. Is Nelson staying open long term? Will it be open when the project's finished? Yes. 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 Two, I didn't get to vote on any sound wall. Um, directly impacted by it. So there were uh, a, a oh, public meeting. Hey, hey, oh, oh. you, right, you've already talked. I know. Will you just be quiet and let us ask them? No. You need to. You've already <laughs> talked, and we're trying to give everybody a chance here. No. It's. You need, you need to give it a break here just a minute. Once we go through and everybody has a chance, you're welcome to talk as long as you'd like. We need to get everybody. So, your question is, again, got off track here. Oh, so, there was a public meeting given by the state, what, maybe about a year and a half ago or a year ago? Um, and they posted public signs, and I attended that. And then they allowed you to vote, and then I took the extra step of taking the votes, not necessarily required of me, but we took the votes to each one of the homes. I would say that probably 60% of homes... Uh-huh. Ground level. How is it really going to be? 40 feet. 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 We, we talked about it at a meeting. We, we signed a protest. Please don't do this to us. Please don't. So my question now, how can we fire everybody? Nothing personal. Fire everybody and just stop this whole thing. We'll all be happy. Okay. Um, I don't think that's not going to happen. So, uh, I'm sorry we already got from you. Uh, do we, we, we already... Let me get the purple over here. I don't think she's asked a question. My concern, I know the sound is a big issue, but what about air pollution? We've got three major roads now around. Is this now or in the future? Now. Have y'all done any testing what it is now? And then when it gets built, what is going to be later? Uh, there, it's sound testing on here. I can, excuse me, I didn't address that. There is a section in the environmental impact statement dealing with air quality. Uh, there are two, two sides of that. There is construction air quality which they have rules and regulations that they will follow. 
uh, to limit dust and to limit pollution with their equipment, and they, they follow those. <clears throat> and then there's also a section on long-term air quality. The traffic that's on the roads, whether it's 45 or Grand Parkway or Harding Toward or Northgate Crossing or any of the other roads in the region, those studies are done on a regional basis. Uh, the Houston-Galveston Area Council will model air quality for our region. They look at the amount of traffic that's on each of the roads, the mix of the cars that use those roads, whether it's trucks, uh, large cars, and whether the cars are new and have very low emissions or they're old and have uh, more emissions. But the road is part of the regional model, and we do not, uh, we do not cause long-term change in any air quality issues. Will that be public information? That is on our website. It's part of the environmental impact statement. And part of, to, to help you, there is the, a difference is the Grand Parkway Association website is uh, a library of sorts, of record for the, for the environmental studies and all the studies that have been conducted over the period of time. The project was initially introduced in the 60s as part of a 30-year mobility plan. It's taken a little bit longer, but, you know, it's moving through it, but the, it's a it's a library of record of sorts uh, to be, that you can look up and see the different the areas that were evaluated as part of the pathway. It has public hearing information as well as the studies that David has talked about. Um, that website is Grand P K W Y. No. No. P K Y. P K Y. dot com. Sorry, I have to write it out. And we also, by the way, have that linked on Villages of Northgate Crossing. dot com to all the PDF documents, right. and they're very. I won't kid you. You're going to have to to put some concentration in to read them because they're very detailed. Very thorough. Um, I know Scott, uh, me, and Jeff have read through a lot of them. But they can be very tedious. So be aware of that. But the, but it is, to your point, there there is very valuable information and gives you a bigger frame of reference in terms of the research that was done as part of this project. And then the, our website, the project website, will provide the construction updates, project information, all. So there there's different information available for each. Uh, Green, sure. Yes. My, my question was, I know that there's been a lot of discussion about the research that's gone on. If I understood everybody's credentials correctly, essentially we have decades of experience sitting on the panel up there. And you've done this type of construction before in, in heavily populated areas. So my question in, in terms of the sound is, there's all these very reactive measures being implemented, the safe uh, driving to do the to dump trucks quietly, the, the backup sensors, um, all these types of things, uh, you know, the driving practices, but I don't see why those things couldn't have been planned and done proactively. Certainly this is not a new issue. I have to think when you do these meetings all the time as you go through various residential areas, uh, the noise is going to be a concern. So why we'll wait till it gets high and then say, well, we put things in place to lower it, uh, the special bulldozers with the, uh, the non-metal uh, wheels and all that stuff. None of that stuff is new. I mean, these are things that should have been considered and, and proactively implemented instead of doing it reactively after we're getting into situations like this where the residents are are concerned and kind of in an uproar. I mean, certainly there was a lot of consideration given to the time schedule. We have two years, we have to do everything we can, and then along the way we'll reactively try to do a few things to appease the group. But, you know, my thing was, why wouldn't it plan more carefully, more proactively, and also what's the accountability factor as you implement these measures to ensure your contractors and subcontractors are adhering to it? Because I'm hearing a lot of very soft language like we're trying, we're, we're training the, the drivers, they seem to be taking to it well, but to me, there should almost be a quiet dumping certification if the guys don't have it. Who's out there monitoring it to make sure that if they're not doing it, there's some you know, immediate action and, and up to and including termination. Oh, okay, okay. Let let's let give them a chance to go ahead and answer that. Is there... <laughs> so the question is, the question is, why aren't these uh, changes that are being implemented and have been implemented implemented at the beginning of the project? And I'm just curious, also, is this the first section to be is, in a residential area? Th this is the first section here in the residential area. We've done a lot of planning. There's been a lot of things that we did, planning for noise in residents and communities in which we're going to be working in. Now, as we've gotten here, we've found different things in which we can improve on, and we're definitely doing that. Um, you know, to that measure, there's no doubt. I'm sure we, we know now to plan some of these factors that we've improved on for later, and that's what we're going to definitely do. Um, this next here. 
Oh, I just wanted to know if there was going to be an impact on the value of our homes. Sure. Uh, when you sell it, you will know. Yeah. Well, I suspect. We're, we're planning on selling and getting right. out of here. Yeah. There you go. You'll find out very soon then. Could you answer the, the second That's part not of my answer the question? question. I, I That's can't. Nobody knows your value at home. The accountability, we, we can, we'll continue to monitor like we have been. And then what you, what you said is correct. If we have trucks, we will consider if, if they're not complying with what we need to do, then we will consider make, removing them from the job. We have we have taken the trucks off the job before for different reasons, so uh, that's what we'll do if we need to. Uh, yes, ma'am. Linda, you had stated that, that there is a regulation of 85 decibels at night. What what consequences is there if that is broken? Who do we report that to? What do we do? Or is it just a, a fantasy decibel number that y'all are hoping to stay under? Are there no consequences with the state of Texas? That's a constable question. Uh, is that a constable question? <laughs> You've been a constable for a while. Yeah, we have a uh, uh, reasonable noise uh, levels, but we also have to have decibel meters are required in certain decibels uh, by state law, and I believe it's 26. Uh, and then we have gotten calls already to our dispatch regarding loud noise uh, at nighttime, and uh, when we get there, we can't locate the noise because the dump truck's already gone, if it is a dump truck noise. So who do we issue the citation to? How many decibel the meters contractor? do you guys have? We don't have any. That's what I thought. <laughs> do, 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 do you have to come to our backyards instead so you can sit there and listen to them? And we have to respond to, to other calls. Uh, you are welcome to call our dispatch if you think it's a legitimate complaint, like the lady who uh, complained of speeding dump trucks and running stop signs. I'm the one that's assigned from... Uh, the Elon shift, and I do sit on that boulevard pretty regularly. Uh, I also have safety issues because that I'm not able to catch the speeders. I'm not going to pull out in front of a dump truck. Then I'm going to get run over. So your your complaints are some of my complaints, but I'm limited. That's uh, just let me, real quick. So, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, just real what? quick because he's, I mean, I called the cops one night, and he showed up, and it was like maybe at 10 at night. He said he can do that kind of If that's an issue with him, not, then you'll need to talk to his supervisor. I mean, he just told me that he couldn't do nothing about it. So. Then back to my question, there's someone the with the state that we can contact. Is there anybody with the state? If we're using professional decibel meters with A weighting, which is what construction companies use, and it's exceeding 85 this morning at 4.30 in the morning, it's between 89 and 90 with the so, trucks. Um, Who do we report this to? Well, the, first off, if, if you're if you're registering that, you know, in you know, you have the option of provide, letting us know because we do. There will there may be spikes when you know with the different with the dump trucks yes. with, the ta yeah. with the tailgates. And admittedly, uh, the driver behavior uh, can be a contributor to that. Um, have no way of knowing. That would be speculation, and we don't need to get into speculation. But well, it's not we, speculation. We have video showing the different ways different drivers pull off. I, I, I'm not doubting you. I meant yeah. driver so behavior who do we is what I meant. I, other than you. No, I'm sorry. Who do we report all that to other than you? I was your question. Um, if we want to go above your zone, who do we report it to? And take your case to. I don't know. We would, we would have I'm to do sure. research and get back to you. Would there be anyone on site that could <laughs> that could deal with any issues should a sheriff's deputy uh, show up? Yes, we always have a supervisor on site. Seriously, there's somebody there at night. Well, if you have guys on the ground with what you said with decibel meters, right? They then they should be witnessing any violations of the limit. And in doing that, they should be able to directly see who has been violating that, what action is taken on the spot by the person doing uh, environmental monitoring to mitigate, correct, or replace anyone violating the decibel limits. I guess that might be a better question if if law enforcement or state legislation is not going to be enforced. Who do we contact if there's nothing's getting accomplished? Is that a question? I believe it was your question. Correct. correct. And I think that we we would need to we would need to find out who that person is. I don't, that's not a question we can answer right now. 
Could you answer this question? These people here. Um, I don't know that, so there's not any answer. I, I, uh, well, I Linda, know, will you post I, that information? Who is your uh, to make that information available, or we're we're in partnership. Our contract is with the state of Texas. So, so who in the state are, of Texas regulates what limits you're allowed to do, and who is that that we can contact? If it's not the constable, who is it? It's the, we're, we're following the uh, State of Texas Penal Code Title IX uh, as it applies in an unincorporated area of Harris County. Uh, we can... We can contract this with This is Raquel Lewis with... Uh, my name is Raquel Lewis. I'm with the Texas Department of Transportation. I'm the manager of public information for the Houston District, the entire Houston District. Um, in... in this case, if you've gone to the contractor and you don't feel like you've gotten a response to them, you can certainly direct that to the state. Our director of construction for the Houston district can then follow up on what monitoring and, and do some investigation of what's happening, how is it being responded to, and what the next steps would be. It, it might behoove you to go through your homeowners association and petition them to work with the lawyers. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, sir. And the base shirt. And I'll, I'll get you next in the I know there was a question asked earlier as to how high the sound wall is. I didn't hear if that's above Six, the ground or It's 16 above feet the above the ground. 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 16, 16 feet, feet above yes, the ground. Uh, black shirt. Overpass. Okay, so oh. the overpass goes oh, over... North Great Crossing, Northgate Crossing Boulevard. <laughs> what is keeping that road quiet? It that that overpass will be approximately 22, 23 feet, depending on the size of beam that they use above Northgate Crossing Boulevard. Uh, there will be rails on the side of that road. Your your standard guardrail, your standard concrete rails, and those rails because the majority of the noise is propagated by your tire contact with the pavement or your exhaust. Those exhausts are typically below the level of that three-foot high rail and they reflect the noise upward. Uh, the noise walls then that are out on the side of the road adjacent to your homes are, are able to properly mitigate for the noise that comes toward your house. Oh, I'm going to have to disagree there. I moved so, uh, from North Carolina. My backyard was right on the back side of us. Something about the size of the Northgate Crossing, but much more busy. Okay, that's not going to work. I can tell you that right now. But I sat in a homeowners association meeting when you brought up something about that they may use the uh, asphalt that's used out on some. No, road. no. What we were talking about was is that villages of Northgate. One or the other might be used. Villages of Northgate Crossing um, in 2011 performed a baseline level of noise study. Uh, so that we had an idea of what our neighborhood was like. Now, uh, this Texas Department of Transportation came out not too long, again, about a year and a half ago, and then they stated the, the levels, and that's also in that documentation that's on the Grand Parkway website, the levels of acceptable sound. And there's a whole description of what that means and how far it is and where it's in your yard and all these different details. Um, the reason we did that sound survey was because of what occurred in Jersey Village. Jersey Village used to be two sections, and it was split in half by uh, the tollway, Beltway 8. And so you may have noticed as you drive through that area in Jersey Village, it changes to sound-absorbing asphalt, and that's as a result of a lawsuit. We so wanted to preserve the sound level so that we had that. We've also preserved all the original documentation produced by the state so that if in the future there was a necessity to sue the state over that issue, we would have that documentation available. It's a little hard to do that right now because it's not built, so we don't know what the circumstances are. But we've done everything that we can do as a homeowners association to mitigate that if it becomes an issue in the future. And the level of sound that's acceptable is documented uh, by the state in those documents. Okay, so They're not fun to read, but they are documents. On selling like when Exxon campus gets completed or any time between now and the completion of this project, our values are going to plummet. We're going to suffer right, as homeowners um, selling. Homeowner values, it's... 
Odebrecht can't, they can't determine whether you should sell your house, what your house is worth, um, anything. That, that's not an issue no, that we can resolve. They have the responsibility to help maintain the value of our properties. If not, then they need to buy them and during, we can move I would then the, say during the dress back to the legal When process. you closed on your home, uh, you, you were actually signing a document that made you uh, aware of the property you were buying and what was going to happen in the area. It was so. not. It was not disclosed in the closing. It was not. Absolutely. And if I bought, bought that property, we would be thinking about Exactly. Nobody wouldn't have brought it. Uh, we thought uh, wait, hold on. If there's questions, I'm sorry. The, the yeah. lady in the black. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't, we can't hear you. I live in Southgate, so I'm hearing all of this, what's happening on uh -huh. the other side right now, and I'm hoping to avoid some of that. Is there any way that they can leave a tree line that will absorb some of that sound for us? Um, I can already tell you that the la that was question was asked during the sound uh, uh, seminar, like the and then. the answer is no. When you look in Southgate, if your house is directly up against... No, but... Uh, oh, it's not. It's still going to be affected by Oh, okay, it. no. So the sound wall will be in a backyard of... Right. Someone that's in Southgate. And since I'm further Essentially. away, I'm hoping for a tree line that will. That will not happen. Down. Is there some way that we can submit a change to the project for that to be done before they start on the Southgate side? Is there somewhere where I can submit a, a request for that? I'm thinking that a sound wall that's solid, 16 feet tall, is but got to be, be better than trees that are being built. A tree line would absorb that sound for me until the sound wall has been built. So again, is there a place where I can make a request? Uh, he's, that he's, change the project? he's indicating that trees are not an effective sound barrier. No, trees are not an effective shrubbery. <clears throat> shrubbery and trees are not effective sound barriers. They have Solid walls, earthen berms. And such are much more effective. Okay. Trees are effective visual barriers, but not sound barriers. Is there a way that I can request a change to the project? That was my question. You can Send it submit. Over to you can submit the request, and we'll uh, to discuss the website? it. We can do the website. Do you? Tonight? Yes. It, it, well, well, the website, the public information mailbox, um, is is one that both Avet Cavazos is the other half of our uh, public information office, and both Abet and I man or maintain and uh, respond to inquiries to that mailbox. Thank you. Uh, yes, the man here. So you guys, um, you said earlier that you guys do build these in small sections. Are y'all going to finish like our section and then move on, or is it going to be like half built and then come back? Do you have any kind of timeline? what we're looking at besides... I'm assuming when you say our section, you're saying like on the west side of North Gate right now. I actually live in that South Gate, so I still have the tree line right there. I just need to get a gauge on it. Basically what we're working out is the first section that we're working on. Right. Um, as far as the heavy embankment that, that people are talking about here, we're looking at the latter part of this year as far as getting that dirt work done there. Okay. We're still going to have additional work to do, but it's not going to be that dirt work. But the dirt work is the loudest. Probably. No. You guys do the dirt work. You're gonna to have to do that on the, the south side or of North Gate as well. Correct. Correct. On the east side. Yeah. South east. Yeah. I guess it's the east side. So and that, that little be. section, you know, both sides. Is there a target date or is that just 2015 when that's gonna be done? Or do y'all finish that smaller section first? You know, pave. It won't be, go you know, we'll definitely work on this mass work right now, and then we'll be moving over to the next section. Will this be in the uh, milestone document that y'all are intending to publish? When we the have, basic areas when of where we you're have the schedule available, we know it's a phase schedule, and when we have the milestones known, we will post that. Okay. Um, yeah. in terms of I think for the homeowners, if, if they knew what to expect, Right. I think that's a much better than the unknown, I think, is what you're getting a lot of. So if you could, you know, tell us. As, as we are, as part of when we have, once we sign the official co contract with, Texas, with the state of Texas on March 22nd, we've got the notice to commence construction on June 24th. So we've really just gotten started on a significant part of our construction. 
uh, before we can do anything along of the uh, within the right of way, there has to be an agreement or an appraisal or construct with between the property owner and the state of Texas. So the acquisition of property is critical to our schedule, and there are elements that we're still we still do not have, and the state of Texas still does not have the acquisition agreement in place. So, um, and that includes a parcel that is next to the um, frontage road. So the question had been raised about using that as an access point. We're not able to have, we do not have access to that property at this time because the property owner has not come to an agreement at this time. So that is one of the other invisible, if you will, uh, elements that, it, that, that uh, significantly influences our schedule. So where, where we do have that ability to get on the property and then conduct construction activities, that's where we're taking advantage of it. Uh, the gentleman in the back with a hat. Yeah, my concern what I was talking to you about earlier is your, your procedure to start teaching the drivers to drive differently. Like I said, I have noticed a slight difference. Are you going to continue to work with these guys to get them to keep bringing the levels down, or is this the best I can expect from it? And, like I said, can you find them if they don't learn, like he said, yeah. in school? No, we, we, we will continue to work with them to try to teach them and to continue to make it better. If we get people who are not doing the things that we want them to do, then we will we will uh, remove them from the project. You know? So this this is a this, this is a viable option. Speaking. The the issues related to running stop signs or those types of things that were brought up. If that's happening and if that's things that our guys are able to witness and and see, we we routinely kick people off the job for those types of things. We don't want that going on as much as as much as any more than you do. We are working to train the truck drivers every night. One of the challenges are that there is a possibility that these are contract truckers and sometimes the the drivers change over from night to night. You have 25 trucks running at a time basically? Approximately 20 so to 25 to right now. The yeah, they could be, they could that we may have to change over. And how long are you expecting the night overnight stuff to go at this point if you don't find a way to switch it over like they were talking the about? The overnight stuff that is going on to the uh, to the east, I'm sorry, to the west and north gate where we're working now, we would expect to finish near the end of this year. And then, yes, and then when we move to the west side, I'm sorry, the east side of north gate, based on what we're seeing right now, we ex expect that work to begin probably sometime in January, and then it would probably be uh, probably be two to three yes. months of heavy work, and with similar this, work. If we notice these drivers, is there a number we can call it directly that we've not been able to get to to let you know that they're slacking again? Or if you were able to, to get us a specific license plate number okay. on a truck, and if you could send that to our, our website and our public information people, and that would give us some documentation that we may not have that we could go either Same talk to that talk to that driver or we could try to monitor him more closely the next night to make sure he's following the rules and and then take steps from there. And you were and saying the light shouldn't be pointed towards houses. The side. light should be you're gonna the light should be pointed essentially straight down the center of our right of way. There's gonna be some spillover glare from the way that the lights are that probably light the backyards more than you're used to, but they shouldn't be spotlighting your house. You might have seen the video where they were spotlighting my, my house. That was, that was me. That was That's, I, I did Is see there that a in. number, if they do that again, I can call, we can speak them. Yes, you should contact Linda as the first point of contact, and we will, again, we talk about this almost on a daily basis with our crew, so I'm hoping that these incidents are more in the past and not a recurring problem for you. Except like with the lights. Hopefully it might actually the some point if you can get it so that they Let me let me okay. let me state just to to be clear. Let me state the number. Hopefully you've picked up this information. It's on our website, but the number is eight five five nine nine grand. Is that um, the flyer you have up there? 
It's, it's in this information, yes. And when you call, please do leave a message. Um, we're, we're not always in the office because we're out in the community, we're at meetings, we're talking with people, we're trying, you know, trying to trying to learn about the project, keep abreast of what's going on. So, you know, we will return your call. Both Yvette and I have access to that number, and that's why we prefer, it's helpful, that if I'm out, Yvette's in the office, or vice versa, one of us is able to know that call. We have our phones set up for when you call, we receive an email notification to our iPhones, so to our emails, and it, it has the voicemail message attached. So it's hard to respond to, uh, to an interest or concern if we don't have that information. So we appreciate your taking just a moment longer, providing the information, and we will get back with you. So for the nighttime issue, is it direct contact to the front to the management site? Uh, it would be probably to the, again, to the, we hear, we get a notification whenever a message is left. Yes, sir. So, and that's 24 hours. The, the other thing about going on site is a safety concern. So it is a construction site, so we ask for your safety. I'm familiar with that. I do that. Yeah, to, and, and you meaning generally, <laughs> sorry, to, to just be cognizant of that. Okay. Yes, the woman here. Can your trucks take a different route other than not gate crossing? May I suggest that you open the west end of that easement and they go out that west end onto the feeder road of 45 and loop back around. They do not have to come on North Gate Crossing. We do not have access to that property. But you will eventually. We will eventually, and at that time, um, well, we won't need it. Then. You know, we, we, it may be a vi it may be a viable route that we could make sure. an adjustment on at that time. At that Unfortunately, time. right now it is not an option for us. But when but when it is when it is available, that is an option. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all get back get back to the drainage problem. Mayor Mayor Ridge, it is right on the evening, mm -hmm. and most of my neighbors. So you're talking about we're not yet working behind your property. You just right behind my property. Mayor, we have not, you're on the east side of the uh, North Gate Crossing, yeah, when correct? Get there, when we get there. Forward. So there is what, if I'm hearing you correctly, and help me because I was having a hard time yeah, hearing. Yeah, we got one. There's an existing the problem already. Yes, okay. Yeah, it's all from, from the moment you get on Mayor Mac Ridge Lane all the way down. So the question is, will it be worse? Will yeah, it be will better? It be worse or better? It's worse. Gonna be so should it be any worse than it is now? Yeah. Now I come a couple times up. Going down the street, my neighbors and kicking boards on the fence. Yep, right next door. The yep. I don't have any substantial proof, but one would say that if there's an eight acre, eight acre water retention pond, and they're pulling the water that normally sheds from the uh, from the south to the well, north, essentially, because it comes towards the properties towards Nelson. One would say that if that water doesn't hit and go through that easement through the uh, trees and it's captured by their water system and transferred over to their water retention pond, there should theoretically be less water. Uh, yes, sir. Red shirt? When the uh, work begins on the east side, North Gate Crossing, we talked about trees earlier. Uh -huh. I, I live in South Gate, so I actually am on the bend. When we talk about trees, will all trees be removed? Um, yes. Let me see here. I assume you're referring to. I have a very small little triangle that I'm not sure is going to be affected. You're right here. On the other side, directly across the street. Over here, the south gate, the left, and the corner of the cul-de-sac. 
Oh, yeah, you're in the corner right up here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut down. Yeah, cool. uh, 45 is up here. That's correct. Okay. So, as you were saying, no. Is that property, you, you would have to find out, I guess. Is there well, that, 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 that should be outside of the right of way where this tree should be. Is a better yeah, place to find so he's indicated it may be outside the right of way. If you draw a line, you see the red line? Your house is right here. Yes. And the line goes here. This is totally non accurate, obviously. I understand. And you kind of see trees there, but who knows? So and I guess what I'll say, a better question might be is there any plans to save any trees? I guess it depends on the situation. Y'all wouldn't just cut down trees no. that Whether weren't on property that you didn't, or the state didn't know. That's no, correct. that is correct. They didn't they know. They're going to put right. everything down on all the right and that's So, that's pretty yeah. safe. Let's so, say one they, contractor is doing possible? one job. Yes. But where it, it's within the right of way and roadway, no. Okay. I mean, uh, in this area within the right of way, I don't believe that. I think the trees are clear from right of way to right of way. Yeah. Uh, just one second. Uh, the red? So, where my house is located, I'm on the corner, and we're being affected by it as it is. The corner so of? Panic Glen and Eastgate. So, we're hearing it all night long. When you move over to Eastgate side, is it going to be work at night? Because I'm trying to figure out if I have five to six months left of nighttime work. I have an hour drive to and from work, and I work with special needs kids. I can't lose any more sleep than I already have. Is do I have another six months? And my the best answer I got was if you don't want to get moved. <laughs> so I don't know what to do with this. Is it going to be another six months of night work? For people in our game. Yes. Yes. I do have a question. The green gentleman was the gentleman in the green shirt was asking you about knowing the noise level. This is your first business. Okay, wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We need to answer this first question over here. Yeah. To answer to answer the question right now, we wouldn't know for sure. If it's gonna be daytime operations or nighttime operations over there because it will depend on when the land truly becomes available to us and then and then we're able to start planning and so I think as as we move forward over the next four to six weeks or so towards the end of the year we'll be able to get a better idea of that and produce some information for you the only would you like to ask a question? Yes. Uh, my other question is where I've forgotten the name. <laughs> but you were saying you were saying I said okay. something about did, acquiring did land. Did you acquire the land already Which? On, on the east side of Northgate Crossing? No. Who owns it? I do not know who owns it. I don't know on the Well, we assume Textot owns where the utilities where the the power lines are. The power lines, are a, the power lines is a center point easement. Center point. Yeah, okay. and I'm I'm not familiar with who owns that property. We could find out and we could I'm let you know. I'm just curious who might own the, you know, near 45, where you could get that. Uh, that information, more or less, is available on hcad.org. Okay. Well, yeah. well, you got to dig through it, but it's all out there. It is. There are discussions going, but there is not any agreement so, at this time. The hands I have raised are the people who have asked questions already. Is there anybody else that has not asked a question? Hold on one second. Blue shirt. Is the blue shirt in the back? No, they're not going to ask a little bit about the actual construction. I had a couple of questions. One is, is the Grand Parkway all going to be elevated to the neighborhood, or is it some ground level? And then the other question is just about what you're actually doing. So, for example, there's this more or less level piece of property on, on the corner. What is that? What is happening with that? What happens next? Thank you for that question. We should have, that would have been helpful to include at the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Through this, through this area, the Grand Parkway will be elevated approximately uh, 15 to 23 feet above the existing ground that you see right now. That's required so that we can get over 45, that we can get, go over Northgate Crossing, and then we have to stay 
elevated so we can get over the well, railroad what tracks. Is the 16-foot sound wall? Yeah. 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 Tell us that you do that. <laughs> right. Wait, wait, wait. I think y'all are missing. Let him answer the question. So, I, I am not a, I can't answer that question. I'm not a sound engineer, and so I don't, I don't know. I just know that based on the analysis with the environmental survey, it provides guidelines that we follow. Okay, um, I'm going to attempt to provide you with some answer to that. Um, so what happens when we build a facility, we have a responsibility as a part of our environmental documentation to do noise analysis. When we build a facility, there are guidelines in terms of where receptors as a result of that facility will be that have to be measured and documented. Anything that goes over 85 decibels is where we have to look at what kind of mitigation can be done with the construction of that facility to bring it to the 85 decibel or less level. Not to get it back to what you had before the facility was there, not to make it you know, completely solid, but what can be done to bring you back down to the uh, required level of accepted noise. Which All of is, that is regulated 85. Well, that's for construction. After no, construction. no, it's, it's the same after construction. Okay, let, let, let me let me finish. Let me finish. So then, what happens is an analysis after, after the determination of where those receptors are and what the noise levels are. Then the next step is to look at what kind of mitigation can be done to bring it to that level. And then there's an ass assessment of what is feasible and implementable based upon an array of criteria. It's very uh, methodical. Uh, but what the responsibility of the state is, is to make all of those assessments and implement a sound feature that will bring it to that level. I, I heard the conversation about I didn't get to vote, I didn't get to vote. The people that get to vote are those who are immediately abutting the right of way, the people whose yards the wall will be on. So if you are across the street, if you're two streets in, if you're four streets in, you don't get to vote. That, that, that doesn't happen. And the determination of the height of the wall is based upon getting it down to the 85 decibels. It is not about aesthetics. It is not about making a, a nice, pretty wall that everybody's going to be happy with or getting it above the sight line of the facility. It is about bringing the noise level down to the 85 decibels or more. Now, we do do things like what uh, David, I believe, uh, mentioned in terms of the noise walls, we do try to work with the communities to make sure that the noise walls are attractive to those, you know, within that area and there's some decisions that get to be made by the property owners in terms of what it will look like, what they'll be painted, what the texture will be. We do do those kinds of things. We have some responsibility and some commitment to an aesthetic facility. We have a green ribbon project program that dictates trying to provide scenic ways. It's not just open to, you know, a great architecture of architect over here says, let's do this. That's not an option. We are a state facility. We are a state uh, agency, and we operate based upon rules, regulations, and contracts. So I, I understand that might not be exactly what you wanted to hear, but those are the facts. And the information that she's talking about is all available on their website. And ours. I won't kid you again. It's it's in a lot of documents, but it's all there if you take the time to read it. You want to know all the details, all the fine print. It's all there. So if you want to see it, um, I think we still have one more question from somebody who oh, yeah, hasn't asked one. She didn't answer. You didn't answer. Ain't nobody answered the question. What is the 15 foot sound wall going to do if you're elevated all the way? I, I think it's there's a misunderstanding. The level down to 85 or lower. Is that 85 at the property line? It's 85 at the receptor based upon the environmental document and the regulations of the, the federal.
Highway documentation process. That's all listed in that document. And it, sa it says where they tested all the different locations. They use software to do this. Um, I think there's a, misunder a misunderstanding. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is not fully elevated all the way from Nelson all the way to Northgate Crossing. So it's only elevated as it goes over Northgate Crossing, then it drops back down. A sound wall would it does be not good. get all the way back down to ground as we go over 45 off to our west here. It comes over 45, it has a slight saddle, comes up to that 22 foot elevation over Northgate Crossing, it saddles back down. Excuse me. It does not get all the way back down to ground level, and then it continues back up over Nelson, over the railroad track, over the Hardy Toll Road. What's that low point? The elevation is off. Those are the diagrams. I don't remember that. I don't remember. It is available online. The schematics are on the website. We would have to. We would have to look. We'd have to check that, and then we can provide that information. But I don't know it off the top of my head. So right now we have like a part of our process, and if those receptors, there's a noise analysis that's done. Based you're, upon the you're on the, the south side. And the yeah. responsibility is the, the, that the area that we feel it has its drainage. It's the sound wall going we'll there, and then there's some drainage. But I do not remember what the specifics of it look like. Right right. 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 Um, I believe the number that you're hearing is not actually correct. It's 72. 72 is the federal threshold. Hey, you're. Now, thank you. I'm asking if Zachary will, as a good neighbor, build a wall, not outside of the state's requirements, just because y'all are a good neighbor to this neighborhood, will you build a nice wall up higher than the road, significantly six, eight, ten feet higher, where when you're driving through, you don't really realize you're driving through somebody's neighborhood. Because the nicer neighborhoods, you don't know you're going through the neighborhood when you're on the highway. The trashier neighborhoods, the wall is low. Keep our neighborhood nice. Please build us a high wall. So would this be something he would submit to you? You can submit that as a suggestion. I will tell you that the scope of our work adheres to the specifications that were defined by the state of Texas, and we are our, our design and project align with that with those specifications. If you read the document that I keep referring to, you'll find in there in the information she's provided. That there was a there's a there's an amount of money that is determined to be of devaluation of your property essentially by this noise, and then they determine if putting a sound wall is worth it to, to mitigate this sound. It's all in that document. I think you'll find it a wonderful read. Uh, read through it. It answers all these questions. Uh, Let me just say I, that there was a correction uh, in terms of the actual decibel. I, David is correct. That uh, it's not 85, it's 72, 72, I believe. And and further, you know, your request for that is, as uh, David was saying, there there's a value factor or function that goes into this. Uh, we can do so much. Uh, we're only allowed twenty-five thousand dollars per receptor. So each home along the way, uh, it counts as a receptor. But the, the impact of trying to raise a wall significantly increases the cost. Uh, those walls, because if you have a 16-foot high wall and you have wind blowing on it, it's going to want to fall over. The higher the wall, the deeper the foundations, the, the bigger diameter dramatically increases the cost of those walls and makes them unavailable to be constructed within that $25,000 threshold per receptor. I was really kind of asking if Zachary would find it in their part to take back 25000 plus whatever they feel our property values are worth. We'd be more neighbor. than happy to take your request and process it through the appropriate You might want to resources. bring it with some cookies. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, sir, the blue shirt. That's costly to raise that three-foot wall up to eight feet. That way when the trucks go by, they don't see anything. So in other words, everything elevated, it's going through a neighborhood, it's at least eight feet throughout. There, there have been studies, and uh, they've looked at the use of a higher uh, wall adjacent to the road for additional noise mitigation, but in this location it was determined not to be uh, effective, and that would be in the noise studies. Not noise, visual. Oh, visual. 
Uh, unfortunately, there's not mitigation impacts for visual requirements. Because anything above three feet has got to help. It really is all in that document. Yeah. All the reasoning that is the why the tollway is, when you read through it, you start to understand the decisions that were made and the cost bases. I was still enough of his question, making our neighborhood nicer. The retaining wall might help us sound, but the ramp that's elevated, if you hide that where the cars don't see our neighborhood, that you're talking... Take where where are you located? Where's your house? Where's your house? That's a right, matter. right where you can see it. They can no, see where, house where is your house? Yeah. On what street? We're on Pine Crossing Drive. Yeah. Where is it? Pine Crossing Drive. I see the tree line right here, the and that tree line is going to be the car line. Where I'm going to say is, an, I'm, if I'm pissed off, I'm going to make it in the, behind the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or you can it. It's It's the microphone. It's my backyard. You had a pool on it. Okay, the woman in the, in the pink. <laughs> All right, hold on. Hold on, hold on. We'll get you after you get her. She's not asking questions. She's not asking questions. I have a question regarding the the right of way property that the other lady was mentioning, the one by the theater. And you guys said that you don't have that yet. What is the status on that? And what is the likelihood that that homeowner or that property owner is not going to give that land up and then it's going to push back your timeline or cause you to come back and start working on that after you've already moved to the other side or something like that? I don't have that information for you this time, to be honest. Um, all I, I, what, what I can tell you is that it's in discussion. Um, Active discussion, and that's that's all I can say accurately. Uh, this okay. gentleman here, and then we'll get you, and then we'll get him. I live on Taylor Ridge next to the construction site right now. As I noted, I mean, like I said earlier, there's water in my backyard right now. We're expecting a lot of rain tomorrow. We had that little swell before, you know, back of my fence, running all the way, you know, to the, to, uh, to the boulevard. Is that something that you can help with that now, like? Really route that uh, or like make it like so. Should he document it and bring this evidence to you? Photos? Well, but are you going to wait for my house to flood that to do something? <laughs> or, uh, I mean, seriously, it's going to be a lot of rain tomorrow. So, what, what would your suggestion be to, to them to solve your problem? Effectively arrange for some type of drainage for the 2014 Taylor Ridge. Thank you. I don't know that they're going to be able to arrange drainage by tomorrow. Prior to construction, it was a Construction is what's causing the issue. I don't doubt that for a second. I mean, it was a ditch uh -huh. running, you know, in the back of my pants, uh -huh. all the way to the Great Crossing Boulevard. But right now, you know, due to the construction, there's a lot of dirt in there, and like it's, it's backing up the wire. So the question is, can you do anything immediately to mitigate the second. drainage issue? And second, I guess, if something were to happen, what would uh, be the resolution for that? We'll definitely look at the drainage um, concern that you're bringing up, and we'll look at that tomorrow. That's not a problem. Um, as far as bringing up any concerns, we'll just give them that you know, we can uh, go at it. I, mean, I, don't want to, I don't want to lose my house. We wouldn't I don't want to get there. <laughs> But if, like, if I know you, I know you go, you know, to your house, sleep well, then you know. Yeah. Okay. Five more minutes. That's all we have left here. Um, th this woman, and then yes. Uh, the uh, I have one more thing. If you say about the have a problem, then take a picture and send it to you. Mm -hmm. One more thing is the vibrate. Vibration. Right now. Yeah, yeah vibration equipment, to the, the going like this. So somehow uh, I'm worried about the foundation to the our home. Mm. One thing had the pool. one thing have the water problem and foundation problem. And we got the water That's, in our pool. It might it actually with dwindles. When I see the means the foundation of the pool and the house is is put in jeopardy. Yeah, but when that. I see it in my bedroom, I can see the their uh, the uh, window, the blind, they are vibrating. Yes. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, me, would you would you mind me. giving me your address? Oh, we give me the address of one zero seven. Spencer's Day. Yeah. Right behind the key, guys. Yeah. What's so the, the number again? Got it. Can you okay. tell, tell them the number again? One zero zero seven Spencer's Day House. I got it. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. The gentleman in the back. Thank you. Uh, I'm curious about the Thank you. She won't get naked by the No, I'm going to do that. It goes over, or is it actually? It'll it'll all be in earthen fill, so it'll all be earthen slopes until we until we get to Northgate. Yeah, and then it'll be walls, and then it'll be earthen again until we get to the railroad. Okay. I didn't get the answer. So if you have any problem, I have to. Yes, I mean, let us know. Send us the information, you know, and then whatever documentation we can do. Um, and then I don't have an answer for you in terms of exactly what to expect, but certainly, you know. Thank would, you for bringing it up. I would take the time to document it, so if there's ever any questions. Out of our house, until three o'clock in the morning, we'll let them first hand her if they want. Yes, sir. Thank you. I just wanted to ask you, gentlemen, you're talking there about what you're putting under the roads. There's going to be feeders all along this the no. main parkway? Or no? Not in this area. It's no, just the main line. It's just feeders. the main line. Okay. Yes, sir. And the ramps will be 45 and somewhere east? The yeah. Um, on their website, it has a schematic and it yeah. shows the on ramps and off ramps and the yeah, main lanes. Where they, yeah. They yeah. also show the feeders. Speaking of the on ramps, they won't exist. There's no feeders in this area. On your on ramps and off ramps, what is the the schedule on those? Is that part of the phase one or the completion timeline that you've been speaking of, or is there a? These are the connectors for 45 north and south down. Because I heard, I believe Excuse Rose me, had boy, it. It's not a thing. I, I want to talk about it. Hey, Brooks, I, I think you had mentioned this, that there was, there was a, you had heard somewhere that the, uh, the connectors for 45 north and south were yeah. going to be okay. actually built and stubbed out and then built out. Yes. Uh, Garnet? Mr. Garnet told me when we, when we talked that the connectors, the connectors going from Northgate 245 that way, aren't going to be built in this phase. Now, the connector that is being built right now is the one coming effectively from Katy to Dallas. So if you want to go from Katy to Dallas, you would get on this thing, fly over it, and hit the road. And that was going to be the highest one for our conversation. And that one curves kind of right over like that Krav Maga place. It like swoops over it. And that's the one that I was talking about having a privacy wall there because you can look straight down and see in the backyard. So as of right now, my understanding for our conversation is that there is only that one flyover that's going to affect us other than ones coming southwest. I can come to a point to what I'm talking about. There's two direct connectors being built. Yes. The one direct connector will be coming from this side, as he says, from Katie. If I'm eastbound on the Grand Parkway and I'm going to go northbound on 45, and that, that ramp will swing out... Uh, about where the 45 feet of road is today, and at that elevation where it's crossing, you've got 45, the frontage road, the Grand Parkway main lanes, and the, D the direct connector uh, going over the top of that. It will be uh, close to 100 feet above existing ground level, uh, and it'll be 100 feet up there, then right here. That is not looking over into any of the homes there. It will be looking over into the business that is here that's going to be... Uh, that will be clipping right in there. The frontage road ties back in by the time we get to the, the road that comes over yeah. there. So it's going to be about 20 foot right there in front of the RV. And that, that's, that's the point I'm making is all those folks that are here, that RV yep. place was poor folks. You'll be able to see right in their backyards. Uh, so, I'm, like uh, uh, this uh, one, I would not think so, sir. No. no. Okay. Uh, I guess yeah. I'm just, just the, the question I'm having, though, is. Is it just going to be that one direct connect and then the second direct connect for now? The, but not second, the second one is the southbound to eastbound movement. Okay. And that is correct. The other ones, the the west eastbound to northbound, eastbound to southbound, northbound to eastbound, or northbound to westbound are not being constructed in this phase. Okay. They will be will not be constructed until traffic volumes warrant their construction. If there's enough people getting off and making a turn going south such that the, the intersection cannot accommodate that traffic. And then, assuming TxDOT has the money to afford to build them, then those would be implemented at a later date. So I can't tell you that it might be five years, it might be 25 years. No, you answer my question. 
Okay, I'm sorry, it's 8.30, and um, hopefully we all got a lot of information. I'm sure not every single answer is answered today, but if you have any questions, you're welcome to direct them to uh, Linda.